So we create our habits and then our habits return the favor and create us. So I hope you have made some good habits in your life. If you didn't, it's alright. In this video, I'm going to save you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you the blueprint, the manifesto. I'm going to give you my life's work. Well, not really. It's just one video. But I'm going to teach you how to create good habits and how to make them last. So if you like this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Let's get into it. First things first, you need to understand this concept of habit loops, which is popularized by this book called The Power of Habit. It's a really good book. Basically, a habit loop is how all habits function. Every habit, there's a cue. There's the activity, and then there's the reward. Every single habit has these three constituents, right? So let's say brushing your teeth. What's the cue? You finish dinner, and your mouth feels kind of weird. You got some pieces of meat stuck in between your teeth. It's time to brush your teeth. It's time to floss. That's your cue. The action, brushing your teeth. The reward, your mouth feels fresh, and you feel better. That's the reward. A little bit of dopamine spike. Or let's say waking up in the morning having breakfast the cue your alarm goes off right signifies it's go time baby the action you make your breakfast and you eat it the reward you feel full you're ready for the day so those are the three elements of a habit so if you want to make a habit for yourself if you want to really make something into part of your life you need a strong cue you need something that's going to signify to your brain hey wake up it's time let's get this it's time to initiate this habit so that's the first thing Figure out what cue you're going to use to initiate this habit and stick with it. Perhaps you want to read a book, right? You want to learn how to read more books. You want to read every day. What's the cue you're going to use? An easy cue is actually having a book shoved in your face somehow, right? Where you have to see it and you can't ignore it. So that you know it's time to read the book. Maybe, perhaps maybe, if you want to read a book every single day, have the book lying on your bed before you go to bed, right? Have the book right there so that you see it and it signifies that habit loop, right? That's the first thing. Q, Q. All right, sweet, good. Let's go on to the next thing. Now that you got the Q sorted out, you need to create systems, systems that are going to facilitate this habit. They say that it takes anywhere between 30 days to 67 days to form a habit until it's part of your subconscious mind, until it's no longer about willpower. So between go starting day and the day it becomes a habit, there's going to be a lot of willpower used up. So make shit easier for yourself by creating systems. Think about what type of systems you're going to make to make sure that this habit stays in place. System is basically a thing that you have made beforehand to ensure that you don't fail. Let's say you're trying to create the habit of eating healthier, right? You want to get on this ketogenic diet that everyone's talking about. So you want to cut the carbs. If you don't have any systems laid in place, when you go out with your friends, you're going to break the habit. You're going to eat some Cheetos. You're going to eat some bullshit because that's what's there. And your willpower is limited. You're going to cave in. But if you incorporate systems, if you do a meal prep, that's a form of a system. You make your food prior to going out. So when you go out, you have the food right there and you don't have to eat the bullshit and the junk. It's going to be easier to create this habit. Eventually, you won't even need to rely on the system. It will just be part of you to eat healthy. That's just one example of a system. So let's talk about another example of a system. Let's say you want to get up every morning at 5 a.m. What most people do is they set their alarm for 5 a.m. And when the alarm goes off, they're faced with a decision. Get up or go back to sleep. They hit the snooze, go back to sleep. But if you incorporate a system, you won't have this problem. This system could be as simple as having your phone across the room so that when it rings, you're forced to get up, making you overcome that initial inertia of the morning and making it easier for you to carry on with your day, getting up early in the morning. That's a system. It's basically setting a framework. You're planning for the worst. You know that you're going to have moments of weak willpower. You know that your brain's going to trick you. So you make these parameters that ensure that it's easier for you to do the thing that you have to do. This is incredibly important when for forming habits. You need to make it easy for yourself, right? Make these systems. Okay, so here are the last tips in regards to creating habits. Try create one habit at a time. Don't put too much on your plate or you're going to make it easy for yourself to quit and to half-ass it. Think of yourself as Goku going into the hyperbolic time chamber. This is some serious business, all right? This is training. One at a time, master that habit, and then move on to the next. Don't juggle habits. 
Your brain can only take so much. It's hard enough to create one habit, but one habit's got the power to change your life, so take it incredibly seriously. The last component that you need in creating habits is having the right mindset. You have to understand that your worst enemy is the man in the mirror. It's yourself. It's the excuses that are going to pop up. The resistance that's going to ensue regardless of what you do. You're going to hear the same mental voice saying, you know what, let's skip this one time. Let's let's not meditate today. Let's not read that book today. Let's let's not go to gym today. You know, let the, let's, let's, let's cheat the diet today. It's okay. It's only one time. When you hear that voice, tell you to shut the fuck up because that voice is evil. That voice is from hell itself. As soon as you give in to that voice once, you are 90% more likely to give in a second time. And then 200% more likely to give in a third time. You're not going to create any habits this way. The voice in your head doesn't want you to be great. The voice in your head wants you to resort back to the creepy little golem self that you were before trying to embark on this glorious habit making mission don't listen to it don't give it power you have the power you really need to use all your psychological fortitude to battle it don't give in once this is serious business this is where most people fail at creating habits they think that they can half faster they think that they can skip a day you can't skip a day You have to keep doing it until it is part of your subconscious. The rewards are glorious. Honestly, the rewards are wonderful. Once you get in the habit of exercising, you love it. Your body changes, the rest of your life changes. Once you get in the habit of reading, your brain changes before you. Once you get in the habit of meditating, your awareness increases. All these things that are beneficial are bullshit at the beginning. They are hard. Your brain doesn't want you to do it, but once it becomes a habit, once it becomes a factor of your subconscious mind once it's automatic your life is literally changing so it's worth it it's worth that grueling first 30 to 60 days of just willpower and systems and psychological warfare because once you have it you have it for life